Hello and welcome to Tete a Tete, France 24's flagship interview show. Our guest today is Nathan Law. He is one of the foremost pro-democracy activists from Hong Kong and, as such, a wanted man by Beijing. Nathan Law was first a student leader during the so-called Umbrella Movement back in 2014. He then founded a pro-democracy party called Demosisto. And in 2016, at the age of 23, he became the youngest member to be elected in the Hong Kong Legislative Council. He was quickly pushed out. He spent some time in jail. And after massive protests back in 2019, China pushed through a draconian national security law in 2020. Nathan Law then decided to leave, and he was granted asylum in the United Kingdom, where he joins us from. Thank you very much for being with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. In early July, the Hong Kong authorities issued arrest warrants against you and seven other activists in exile, even slapping a bounty of one million Hong Kong dollar for each of you. You're accused of colluding with foreign forces and inciting secession. What does it mean uh, for you, for Hong Kong and for China? The issue of the arrest warrants and the bounty is definitely a step up of intimidation tactics, especially the bounties. Uh, for a hundred thousand pounds bounty on each of us is, um, is unprecedented. It's never happened in the history of Hong Kong that um, political activists, they are awarded with uh, this kind of prize. And it really shows that Beijing has been determined to continue to deteriorate Hong Kong's freedom. And also for um, all eight of us, we are peaceful advocates for the future of Hong Kong, for accountability of the government. It really shows that Beijing is, uh, is not being held accountable and continue to approach Hong Kong uh, with um, very heavy-handed approaches. Right. Uh, uh, since then, uh, the activists' families, including yours, have been brought in for questioning uh, by uh, the police, some members of your disbanded party uh, as well. Uh, what are they up to? Is this emotional blackmail? It's really scary that your family members or your former colleagues, they are being intimidated, brought to police station, their homes being raided in early morning just because of your advocacy work. What we, advocate for, what we advocate for is a free and democratic Hong Kong, and we believe that this is legitimate. Uh, what we do is not to incite subversion or secession, but to really make Hong Kong to become the Hong Kong that we were promised, which is to enjoy democracy, autonomy, and freedom. Um, so it's really sad to see all these people being treated like this because of our advocacy work. Um, but even though Beijing stepped up its intimidation tactics, we will continue to speak up for Hong Kong and speak up for freedom and democracy. Right. Have you been in touch with your family lately uh, to discuss what has been happening uh, to you and to them? Three years ago, I issued a public statement saying that I'm severing tight with my family because I, I knew that Beijing would do things like this. Um, in mainland China, there has been a long history of political dissidents' family being harassed or even being incarcerated. And I think this is the least thing that we would like to see it happen in Hong Kong. Um, so for now, I've, I haven't been in contact with my family for a long time. And um, I don't know actually what they've received um, or how they treated um, in the past months. But um, for me, I can only wish them safe and peace and to really urge the government to stop intimidation like this. Uh, this is embarrassing, this is despicable, and you'll be condemned by international community. Right. Uh, do you feel uh, threatened uh, by uh, China where you are uh, in the UK? I just want to remind our viewers that in June, the British police uh, started a probe uh, after video footage uh, showing pro-Hong Kong demonstrators were attacked by a group of Chinese national in the town of Southampton, and that last October, a Hong Kong protester was attacked on the grounds of the Chinese consulate in Manchester, uh, resulting in Beijing removing six diplomats who were allegedly involved in this assault. There have been numerous cases where the Chinese government extraterritorially 
persecute or um, to assault political dissidents in different parts of the world um, is um, fairly unlikely to happen in uh, the United Kingdom. But if the continu continuation of the step up of uh, intimidation um, follows, then it is likely that our safety will be at risk. For me, I'm a political refugee in the UK, um, so the government has a responsibility to protect me and I'm in close contact with them. Um, but what I'm worried is uh, there are still a lot of um, political activists, exiled ones, who are living in countries where there are weaker rule of law, for example, countries in Southeast Asia or um, Middle East, um, they are more vulnerable to these um, extraterritorial uh, persecution from the Chinese government. Right. Uh, you say you're in touch with the British authorities. Uh, have they decided to uh, give you uh, more uh, protection? Uh, that's number one. And then uh, I, I guess you must have uh, heard the Canadian Prime Minister recently accuse India of carrying out an attack against an opponent on Canadian uh, soil. What was your reaction when uh, you heard that? Well, at the end of the day, I have to be very um, careful in my daily life. Um, I have to be aware of my surroundings. And of course, um, the authorities putting uh, attention on any news or intelligence that may signal that my safe safety is at risk. So um, this is the part that I can do. But um, at the end of the day, uh, most importantly, is the international community do not condole actions like this, continue to condemn the government for doing this um, extraterritorial, extraterritorial persecution and attacks. And I think that is the best way to stop it. Right. Uh, to go back uh, to Hong Kong, uh, I mean, the obvious assessment is that China has now fully cracked down in uh, Hong Kong. The opposition is either in jail or in exile. It seems that it's game over for democracy in Hong Kong. The most important question is at what expense? You could definitely see the economy of Hong Kong is falling, people are leaving Hong Kong, talented people, and also um, for many people still living in Hong Kong, they are in a huge stress and really pessimistic about the future of it. Um, the Hong Kong, as we know, which is uh, thriving as an international financial hub, is because of its freedom and um, people believing in its system. But for now, uh, the government, because they wanted to quash dissidents and protest movement, they lost them all. Um, I think this year is the most pessimistic year for Hong Kong people when they think about the future of Hong Kong. And China clearly knows it. Uh, if Hong Kong loses its autonomy status, if Hong Kong loses its uniqueness as a bridge of the West and China, then there isn't more left. So that, that is a big problem. And I think China knows it, but China is determined uh, to retain power at the expense of Hong Kong people and the future of Hong Kong. Right. Why, why did this happen? Is it because of uh, Xi Jinping? Is it because Hong Kong is less important uh, for China's uh, economy? Is it because of uh, Taiwan? Why, why essentially has Chinese, the Chinese authorities decided to make Hong Kong like a uh, part of uh, mainland China, if I may use the expression? Well, the key to Hong Kong's success is division of power. It's a free society and a strong civil society. But as um, the PRC and the Chinese Communist Party under Xi Jinping's leadership, it's getting more and more authoritarian. It's centralizing more power and really intolerant to the concept of accountability. So uh, when you have uh, a central government that's growingly more authoritarian, the autonomy that uh, this periphery area or autonomous area like Hong Kong enjoys is dwindling. So um, this is um, the root cause of the problem is we have a dictator who wants to grab more and more power and eventually um, it will destroy the foundation of Hong Kong because Hong Kong thrive um, based on the freedom and the concept of accountability and division of power. Right. Uh, is this uh, because he has Taiwan in mind, that he wants to tell uh, everyone 
uh, mainland China uh, will take back control from Hong Kong and from Taiwan, whether the rest of the world, and especially likes the West, sorry, likes it or not. If Xi Jinping wants Taiwan, if Xi Jinping wants Taiwan to be part of China in the future, the best way is to retain Hong Kong as a free and democratic place, because that could show that there's a possibility you can enjoy your freedom and liberty and democracy under Chinese ruling. But this is not the case. China has gone to the opposite side. And the reason is that they're flexing their muscle and they want to dominate the world. They want to become the superpower who don't have to give any regard to international order and they can do whatever they want because they have so much resources and power. Um, so for now, the window of the so-called peaceful reunification of Taiwan and China has closed just because of what happened in Hong Kong. And the only way Xi Jinping can accomplish his wish is to buy force, to buy war, which is um, not what we want. We, we definitely want to against any kind of war. And I think this is the responsibility of the international communities and also our democratic allies in the West. Right. As a conclusion, Nathan Law, do you still have hope uh, for Hong Kong? I'm not blindly optimistic about the future of Hong Kong, but I think it is even more foolish to feel hopeless. For me, having democracy and freedom in Hong Kong is almost like a faith that even though it's difficult, even though we don't know when it could be achieved, but I believe one day uh, when I return to Hong Kong, um, I can elect my city's leader and I can enjoy freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, all the things that we are enjoying in this country. Nathan Law, I want to thank you very much uh, for appearing on the program uh, from London. Thank you all for watching it.